Welcome to Everyday Buddhism, making every day better by applying the proven tools found in Buddhist concepts. Welcome to episode 47 of Everyday Buddhism, making every day better. I'm back. <laughs> I took a few weeks off, as is obvious from the uh, missing podcast episodes uh, that usually are there every couple weeks, um, just to sort of rebuild, uh, rebuild uh, my strength, uh, my optimism, and uh, sort of develop a, a, a resilience bank, which is what we're going to be talking about in this episode. You know, and I just explained what I was about to do on a Facebook post uh, about three weeks ago. I shared, well, it's probably more about four weeks now, uh, shared a post and a link to an article called Your Surge Capacity is Depleted and It's Why You Feel Awful. It's an article written by Tara Haley. And um, I shared it on my personal Facebook page and also the Everyday Buddhism Public Group. I wrote, I'm sure many of you have already hit the point where your surge capacity is is totally depleted, either just recently or months ago. And in the last few weeks, so this would have been about a month ago, I faced up to the fact that I'd been feeling off and awful for days on end. And feeling that way is something I am not at all familiar with as a nearly incorrigible glass half full person. I totally identified with Tara Haley's description about what she's going through and how strange it was for her, being a high achiever, to feel what she described as a, quote, anxiety-tainted depression mixed with ennui that she couldn't kick. And it was also along with a complete inability to concentrate. And when I read that, it was, it was exactly the way I'd been feeling. So those of you in my Everyday Sangha and Everyday Buddhism membership community know that I recently did face up to the fact that I needed to give myself a little break. And in in the article, Tara Haley points out that expecting less of yourself is exactly what you should do to help yourself go the distance in this pandemic, even though we don't know how long that distance is or what we're going to find at the end. Her article talks about this thing called ambiguous loss, and it's why we feel so bad, and how it's news for for many of us, uh, and how we have no coping skills. Much like my recent Everyday Buddhism podcast called Six Steps for Coping with Uncertainty with Greg Creech, Haley asked the question, how do you adjust to an ever-changing situation where the, quote, new normal is indefinite uncertainty. So it's been a little over a month since I released the episode with Greg Creech, and it gave myself time to not think about writing content, having ideas for content, or recording content. I also took time away from hosting the Everyday Buddhism Sangha, or the, which we call the Everyday Sangha, with gratitude for volunteer hosts from the Sangha who took over for me. Just a few weeks prior to recording the episode with Greg, uh, we lost our dog, Bella. She was 15 and the last dog in the house since we lost her littermate brother, Bach, in April of 2019. So I did realize that I was personally was dealing with a mix of this thing called ambiguous loss, as well as the more tangible loss and grief of losing Bella. You know, a while ago, I expected to snap out of feeling off and awful within a week or two into this past month of my break, but I'm here to report that just giving myself a little break wasn't a magic solution. I did what seemed to be all the right things. I took more walks, spent more time outside, read more, and 
let myself sleep in. <laughs> but it still seemed harder for me to focus and get motivated to do the things I needed to do. But see, it's Haley's article. Uh, she, she, she points out that this is very typical. Uh, she did interviews with Ann Mastin, Ph.D., Pauline Boss, Ph.D., and Michael Maddow, M.D., about our adaptive surge capacity that we call on in response to a short-term stressful situation like a natural disaster. And it's that adaptive surge capacity that ha it's, it's met for the short-term situation, so therefore it has limits. And in this situation that we're dealing with, we're, we've depleted that surge capacity because our emergency is no longer short term. It's now chronic. And I've been hearing from friends, family, and Sangha members who feel the same way. In the article, Pauline Boss emphasizes how our solution-oriented culture and way of thinking is actually destructive when faced with a problem that actually has no solution. This time of ambiguous loss causes feelings of helplessness and hopelessness. And a better way to deal with these feelings is not through trying to think our way out of them or find a solution because there really is none, but it is what Michael Maddows promotes, which is this resilience bank account. Now, a resilience bank account is about gradually building regular practices into your daily life that will promote resilience. And this requires creating new habits to replace the old solution and achievement-oriented ways we depended on in our pre-pandemic lives. It's a matter of starting small and slowly building your balance so that you will eventually have something to fall back on. Now, some of the actual practices are more sleep, better nutrition, more different exercise, more meditation, self-compassion, and I'm emphasizing that, gratitude, also emphasizing that, and connection, and saying no when we don't feel like we can do something. But there's a big picture framework that holds the, that hold these practices, and it's like a framework of attitude adjustment. And they are they consist of a certain certain steps, which I will um, share with you here. The first step is acceptance. And I've talked about this a lot. I've talked about it a lot from the framework of Japanese psychology. I've talked about it a lot from Greg Creech's books and in interviewing Craig Creech. You know, acceptance is a dynamic thing. It's not a giving up or, oh, you know, that, that feeling of, I guess I have to accept it. I can't change it, blah, blah, blah. No, acceptance can be a powerful force. It's a force of taking control of your own mind and looking into reality instead of pushing it away or escaping from it. You know, instead of like exaggerating it or avoiding it. That's sort of the push-pull phenomena of the second noble truth that the Buddha talks about. Both of those things, pushing and pulling, are clinging. If you're pushing it away, you're actually clinging to it because you keep thinking about it. If if you're pulling, pull, no, you wouldn't pull the actual pandemic towards you, but you would pull your wishing for your old life back to you. And that's also clinging, clinging to something that is no longer there. In acceptance, we accept that life is different. And when we stop fighting reality, we can apply our energy towards more constructive activities. The second attitude adjustment is expecting less from yourself. Expecting less and replenishing more. It takes more, if it takes more than like a half a day to get focused and complete one task, okay, that's okay. I know it's totally out of what we normally accept for ourselves, totally out of what we think is right for ourselves as we push ourselves through our days. But everything about our daily rhythms and times are different now, and we need to slowly build. Let's face it, we're building a new way to live. The other attitude adjustment is recognize 
the different aspects of grief. We are grieving actual lives lost, sicknesses, the loss of being able to visit others. We are grieving our lost way of life. We are grieving the fact that we have an uncertain future. Now, the stages of grief that they talk about are typically uh, referred to as denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Now, one thing about stages of grief is that they're not linear, and they can surprise us when they arise and flare up and then settle down. And then they are flare up again and settle down again. We expect to sort of like go through these stages of grief and be done with them. That's not how grief works. You know, grief is a shapeshifter, as I've talked about before. You know, the way to accept our new normal and understand the different aspects of grief is to um, understand the fact that we will always feel a little off balance because one minute we may feel fine and the next minute we'll feel that anger again, which we thought we shook off. Another attitude adjustment is experimenting with both end thinking, like hyphened, both end thinking. This means to face reality, but also change our perception of it, at least sometimes. This is the avoidance of storytelling, which is that creates that second arrow from the Buddhist par parable. You know, we have this thing that's happening to us that feels crappy, but the more stories we tell ourselves about it, the more we just shot ourselves with the second arrow. First arrow may be the pandemic. The second arrow is our moaning and groaning about it. See, life in the pandemic can feel and be crappy, but at the same time, you can also feel peaceful and free as you take a daily walk. You can feel peaceful and free in your meditation if you're opening your eyes and your ears to the sound of nature around you or just the sounds of your house. There, there's a slowing down and an openness that can make you feel peaceful. And that can happen right in the middle of the pandemic. That is both and thinking. Another uh, attitude adjustment is looking for new and old activities to fulfill you. You know, many of our pre-pandemic normal activities of self-care are no longer possible. We've accepted that, I think. We don't go to the movies. You know, we don't go out to dinner unless it's sitting outside. Um, there's, there's many things that we can't do anymore. We can't even visit our relatives in nursing homes. But we can look for new ways that make us happy or provide self-care or make us feel relaxed or make us zone out. Activities that help us get in that mindless, timeless, you know, flow. <laughs> and and some of them could just be tackling a household project. Now, I know everybody talked about, well, now I can do all these household projects now that I'm stuck here at home. And then we didn't do it because we weren't motivated. But the key was, I think, is overcoming that problem-solving activity that, well, okay, now we have to get all these activities done. No, we really don't, you know. D Practicing self-care is about, okay, what would I be interested in doing of all these projects that I had on my list? Let me just pick one and do it for like 10 minutes. That's it, 10 minutes. So we could tackle a household project for 10 minutes, which could stretch to 30 minutes or an hour or two hours, or it could be 10 minutes one day and 10 minutes the next day. We could play games, put down our phones. I don't mean games on your phones, but playing games with each other. You know, chess, checkers, backgammon, whatever. We could do art. Even if you don't do art, do art. Grab a coloring book. We could get physical in the yard or garden. And I realize, too, that in the Northern Hemisphere, our time for doing that is probably shortening here. But, you know, there's leaves are falling. And we can rake, and rake is meditative. Another attitude adjustment is focusing on maintaining and strengthening important relationships. Helping others, even through a phone call, quick phone call check-in. How you doing? What are you doing over there? We all know how helping others is ultimately a selfish activity because it makes us feel good and makes others feel good too. You know, some of us maybe are living in neighborhoods we didn't even know who our neighbors were, but now people are taking walks. So on your walk, 
Smile. Make eye contact. Say hello. Ask them their name. Ask them their dog's name. You can do that while maintaining social distance. And and that is is an important thing. We are social creatures, and we can't be the, the way we used to be pre-pandemic. But maybe we can stretch our boundaries a little bit. And now I'm going to add a tip of my own to this article on building a resilience bank account. It's a personal thing that I've used, a method that I've used before as part of meditation and incorporating a meditative perspective in every day. But, you know, since the pandemic, when I feel fearful, judgmental, or angry thoughts closing in, it's a go-to for me. And that attitude is just this. That's it. Just this. When I'm looking for certainty and instead find myself tangled in thoughts and feelings that circle round and round, I pause for two minutes, close my eyes, and feel my breath rising and falling. And I listen to the birds and squirrels. And then I say to myself, either quietly, internally, or out loud, just this. That single moment of allowing to be as it is at that moment centers me in my body, in life as it is now, in my awareness. And it stops obsessive thinking immediately. Try it. I promise you, it will stop that obsessive thinking. Now, the reason I'm sharing all this in this episode is, first of all, personal and selfish. It's a way for me to just jump back into my writing and recording after my month plus hiatus that actually felt like about a week. And it's also a way of introducing two upcoming podcasts, which podcast episodes, which I promise will come sooner rather than later. Okay. So those podcast episodes, I have a feeling will help buoy you for an hour or a few hours or a few days as we all continue to struggle to keep our heads above water and our feet on balanced ground. You know, since the pandemic, I have been trying to adjust the podcast content to meet the needs of the moment. I had other guests waiting in the wings since last year, Um, but to do an episode with them based on the books they wrote or, or their philosophies, it seemed a bit tone deaf to the suffering all around us. You know, interestingly enough, even though I had intellectually accepted that even by April, I thought, okay, yeah, this is going to go on for a while. I think I kept half expecting to move on to these other topics and other guests I had in the wings for my podcast, just like I kept half expecting to be used to this whole pandemic thing by now, or maybe that should, should be over by now. But no, here we are. And just... That's it. Here we are. And we all need some upgrades to our support system to keep us going for as long as we need to go, however long that is. You know, we are living in confusing times, and we cannot expect or cling to some sort of clarity that isn't even there. There is nothing about these times that can be figured out absolutely. The end isn't in sight. But you know, that doesn't mean we need to give up. It means that we have to find ways to keep going. In planning my next podcast, I hope they will help become your support upgrades for you. I hope they will help build up your resilience bank account so that you can keep going. So stay tuned for these upcoming podcast episodes, which I will do a brief overview about right now. The next podcast episode I have lined up, which I have already recorded, recorded, by the way, is a guest special guest interview with one of my podcast listeners. This is, and this is a feature that I want to emphasize here. It's a feature I'd like to continue as we walk through this uncertainty together. I thought it'd be great and helpful for me and helpful for all of you to reach out to my podcast listeners and ask you to write me an email and share some of your own coping skills, some of the ways you are supporting yourselves and your family and your friends, 
Some of the ways you may be using resilience building practices or activities. You can be Buddhist or other spiritual or otherwise. Anything that you've incorporated in your lives lives that you've that have helped you walk through the troubled times we're in. I'm sure all of our listeners would like to hear what you're doing. Connect with me, and I will invite some of you to be guests on an upcoming episode. I will share how to connect at the end of this episode, and I'll also, of course, post the details in the show notes. But the first, the very first of these special, you know, podcast listener guests interviews is with Everyday Buddhism podcast listener David Farley. If you listen to episode 46 with Greg Creech, I mentioned David and read a bit of his article about uncertainty that he shared with me. He reached out, said he was a longtime listener and wanted to, knew that we were going to be talking about uncertainty and wanted to share his article. So I thought an interview with how David is coping would be a good way to start, since he did originally reach out to me. A little bit about David. He's a New York-based writer with a focus on food and travel, and also Buddhism. He's also a certified meditation teacher. His writing, he, his writing regularly appears in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Newsweek, National Geographic, the BBC, and other publications. Farley is the author of two books, one, Underground Worlds, A Guide to Spectacular Subterranean Places, and the other, An Irreverent Curiosity in Search of the Church's Strangest Relic in Italy's Oddest Town. And that actual book was made into a documentary by the National Geographic Channel. And by the way, I will post links to his websites and to his articles in the show notes. I thought it was might be pretty appropriate to hear what David had to say about how he's dealing with the pandemic, since he is a food and travel writer in New York City. Just think about that. The pandemic hits. What can't you do? You can't go out to dinner. You can't travel. And he lives in New York City, sort of like the hot spot, the, the ground zero of the pandemic in the early months. So it was a great podcast episode and look forward to it. I will probably be releasing it within the next week or 10 days. And after the upcoming episode with David Farley, which is episode, will be episode 48 and it's entitled A Missing Future, I have a recording scheduled with Kimberly Brown. She's the author of Steady, Calm, and Brave, 25 Practices of Resilience and Wisdom in a Crisis. This book, and I have read it, is a wonderful little handbook to keep as a companion to our lives during this, how could, I mean, it's an awful time, right? In, during this awful time of pandemic, plague, whatever you want to call it, racial unrest, political divisiveness, and the ravages of climate change, fires, hurricanes, and flooding. Wherever we go, we're met with the challenges of how to be steady, how to be calm, and can we be brave? Kimberly gives us practices that will help. She's a meditation teacher and writer based in New York City. She teaches meditation at Mindful Astoria, the Rubin Museum, Shanti Deva Meditation Center, and she's also a guiding teacher in the Interdependence Project's Mindfulness Teacher Training Program. I look forward to my upcoming discussion with Kimberly and can't wait to share it with you. But don't forget what I'm looking for from you guys. All my Everyday Buddhism podcast listeners is for you to write to me and at, tell me how you are, how you're coping. Where have you found support? What are some of the resilience building practices or activities that you have incorporated in your lives that have helped you walk through these times? Please, please, please email your insights or comments to Wendy Shinyo, that's all lowercase, W-E-N-D-Y-S-H-I-N-Y-O, Wendy Shinyo at everyday-buddhism.com. And email them with the subject line, How I'm Coping. I will reach out to schedule a time to talk with you after I've received your email, and then possibly schedule a podcast interview 
with you and a couple other listeners, or we can schedule a few podcast episodes. It all depends on how many emails that I receive from my listeners. So chip in. I think you would just be contributing to a, a few wonderful podcast episodes, or at least one that will help others. I look forward to hearing from you. So that's it for this episode. And as a reminder, as always, don't forget that there are many ways to join me and others in either the private donation-supported Everyday Sangha, which meets every other week on Thursday evenings virtually via Zoom at 7.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, or our free public open Sangha, which will now be held every other month. I'm, no, I'm sorry, now be held every month instead of every other week, uh, every month on Wednesday evenings at 7.30 p.m., tentatively with Levi Shinyo Sensei. We'll get back to you exactly on that, but uh, tentatively that is scheduled for uh, September 30th, Wednesday night, with Levi Shinyo Sensei. Uh, I'll keep you updated if something changes. Uh, we're in process of figuring uh some internal logistics out right now. So that's it again for this episode. Until next time, keep finding ways to make yours and everyone's days better. <laughs>